everyone. Hope you're having a beautiful Friday afternoon and it's rain. The Lord sent the rain to cool the earth down and also to water the plants and make things beautiful for us. But we're going to get into the Word of God today on this beautiful Friday afternoon. This is Pastor Kenny Setzer from To God Be The Glory Ministries. And it looks like we're going to be trying to start opening up churches real soon. So we'll just see what God says. Let's go to a word of prayer right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for all you've done. Thank you for such a great day, a great week, a great life, great things that you're doing. Thank you for taking away the fear, the anguish, and the anxiety, and giving us hope and peace in a time like this. We give you thanks and praise. Amen and amen. Let's go to the Word of God today. And I want to focus today on God is able to resurrect things. I don't want people to lose hope and I don't want people to get fearful and think that life is just over. There's not going to be any more happy days and no more good days. God is able or he's able to resurrect things, change things and make them anew, make them fresh. Give us a new start. And just as the Lord talked to the prophet Ezekiel in the 37th chapter of the book of Ezekiel, uh, the Lord was speaking to his people of their condition and he used an example to show the people he's able to bring you back from where you've gone to. Now through this pandemic and through these times that we're facing, many people have lost hope. They've lost the will and the joy and the peace that they once had. They lost their praise. They've lost all their victories. What you have to do is start Looking back over where God brought you from, count your many blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings and see what God has done. He's not finished. God is not sick. He's not on vacation and he doesn't have the coronavirus. He's strong and he's able and he's willing to go through. So let's go to the word of God in the book of Ezekiel. Our reader is going to read. And uh, listen as the word of God unfolds right in front of our face. Read. Ezekiel 37 and 1. The hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley which was full of bones and caused me to pass by them round about. And behold, there were very many in an open valley and lo, they were very dry. Now, we must understand from the beginning of time, God has used great men and great people of God to prophesy the, the mind and heart of God for the foretelling of things to come. And just before this pandemic came, there were many prophecies that went forth. Now, of course, some of those were false prophets, liars. Uh, uh, just people unauthorized to speak. and But God sent forth true men and women of God and began to foretell of something coming. And God used these people, but nobody heeded the warning. Many people did not heed the warning. And even now, even now, there are people that are not heeding the warning of God. With all of this dying and sickness and tragedy and loss of job and loss of food and everything going on, there are still some people whose mind hasn't changed one bit. In fact, they've gotten worse. And I'm telling you, in a time like this, we need to let go of the pettiness. We have so much pettiness within us as a people, we grapple and whine and moan over things that make no sense. Can I ask you a question? Who has time to gossip in a time like this? Who has time to find fault? Who has time to hold grudges? Who has time 
to worry about what somebody else has in a time like this. Every day that the sun come up, I'm so glad to see the sun come up. I start thanking God for another day. It's so good to be alive. And then I ask God to find something, help me find something that's going to occupy my mind throughout the day so that I don't have to panic and fear. But this pandemic, this situation that the world is in has not changed some people, not one iota. And I'm asking you with the, with the series of messages that you've been hearing, please change, church. Please change. Let go of the pettiness that's in your heart. Stop causing division among people. Stop talking and running your mouth and trying to set disunity. Please stop it. The prophets have spoken and the Lord spoke to the prophet Ezekiel and said, look at the condition of the people. They're, they're a valley full of dry bones. In other words, they're not only dead, but they've been dead a long time, dead spiritually. Dead to love, dead to care, dead to happiness, dead to unity. And God doesn't want us to be like that. Read, reader. Verse 3. And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, thou knowest. Again he said unto me, Prophesy upon these bones. And say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. And this is where the Lord put the onus back in the hands of the prophet and told the prophet to prophesy against these dead conditions that people are in. Speak over their lives, speak over their situations so that they can begin to live again. Because whenever you have anything in your heart against anybody, Whenever you are causing division and breaking the peace, you are literally dead. You don't know it, and nobody's told you, but you're dead. You're dead to God. You're dead to yourself. And the Lord is telling the prophets and the men and women of God these days, speak over the people so that they can begin to live again. And I want to say to preachers, preachers, stop preaching yourself. Stop preaching your, your, your kingdom on earth. Stop preaching your, 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 the size of your home, the type of car you drive. Nobody cares about those things. Speak to the people's souls. Stop this bragging. You're nothing without Christ. Me, you, anybody without Christ, we are nothing. The Lord is saying to the people of God, speak to the people and prophesy over them that they may live again. Because the Lord asked the prophet, can these bones live? And the prophet said, Lord, only you know. Only you know. Read, reader. Verse 7. So I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I prophesied, there was a noise. And behold, a shaking. And the bones came together, bone to his bone. And when I beheld, lo, the sinews and the flesh came upon them, and the skin covered them above. Listen to this. The, the prophet began to say, <clears throat> when he began to do what God told him to do, there was a noise. <clears throat> and the bones came together, and things began to happen. When, when, when we start doing what God tells us to do as men and women of God, leaders of the church, leaders in, in different capacities, leaders of our homes, something starts to happen. Things began to change. And the only way we're going to come through this is we have to start speaking what God says, not what the government says, not what the CDC says, not what the, 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 the uh, whatever liar is out on TV today is saying. We have to say what God says. Speak what the Lord says. He says, I'm the Lord God that healeth thee. And he said he would perfect those things which concerns us. Then he said, Lo, I'm with you always, even unto the end. So God's word prevails. God's word can prevail. He told Ezekiel to speak to the condition of 
my people. And when the prophet obeyed, things began to change. And I'm going to say today, as a pastor of this church here in Charlotte, to God be the glory ministry, I'm speaking over the people of God. And things are going to change. I'm speaking that people will come out of this pandemic prosperous, joyful, happy, still saved, still kept. Yes, I'm not stupid and I'm not crazy. I know some that are out there using this opportunity to sin as much as you can. But it's time for a change. It's time for a change. I don't know how close we as a people have to come to dying before we wake up and stop it. You shouldn't let anything captivate you that you can't turn it loose. Nothing should hold you so close that you can't turn it loose for Jesus. Not a man, not a woman, not a habit, not a drug, not anything should hold you and capture you so close that you can't shake it off for Jesus Christ. We're going to have a few more verses and then we're going to conclude this message today. Read, reader. But there was no breath in them. Then saith he unto me, prophesy unto the wind. Prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind, thus saith the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came unto them, and they lived and stood up upon their feet, an exceeding great army. Then he saith unto me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say, our bones are dried, and our hope is lost. We are cut off from our parts. Therefore prophesy and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, O my people, I will open your graves, and cause you to come up out of your graves, and bring you unto the land of Israel. And ye shall know that I am the Lord, when I have opened your graves, O my people, and brought you up out of your graves, and shall, my, and shall put my spirit in you, and ye shall live, and shall place you in your own land. Then shall ye, that I, the Lord, have spoken it, and performed it, saith the Lord. This is a beautiful prophecy. And the Lord said, even... The, 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 after the prophet had spoke, the people couldn't breathe. They're not breathing. And breathing is a kind of freedom. It's a kind of joy or release. And then the Lord spoke to the prophet and said, call the four winds to come and blow air into them that they might live and that they might go forth. And God is breathing new air into your life. New wind is blowing your way. It's time for you, young lady, it's time for you, young man, to let some stuff go. You may not get the chance <clears throat> to correct things in your life ever again. It's time to let some things go. I thank God for what has taken place in this world and this country. I'm not complaining. I have been blessed through this pandemic. God has blessed me. I've eaten every day. I've, I've enjoyed good health. I've laughed. I've spent time with my family. I've enjoyed life. Because God breathed new breath into me. And he had told me many years ago that I didn't have to stay in the valley of dry bones. And I'm asking you, if you're in that valley of dry bones, it's time to come out. It's time for some of you to change your lifestyle. Look at the situation you have allowed yourself to get into. Suppose the, the virus were to, to claim your life tonight. Where would your new home be? Where would you wake up if the virus were to claim you tonight? If you were to stop breathing, where would you wake up? It's a good question, isn't it? It's time to live now. Breathe new life, new breath. New air. Can these bones live? And the prophet said, only you know, Lord. And then the Lord put the onus 
and the duties and responsibility back in the hand of the prophet, the Lord said, you speak unto them and you say for them to live. So as the shepherd of God today, I speak over the people of To God Be The Glory Ministries and them that will view this broadcast. And I'm saying it's time for you to live and not die. But there must be a change. There has to be a change in you. It's time to do something different. Look what you've allowed yourself to become connected to. You need to disconnect all of that stuff. You really do. I thank God for this word today. I thank God for allowing us to be here to give the word of God. This is Pastor Ken Setzer from To God Be The Glory Ministries here in Charlotte, North Carolina. Signing off saying thank you and we love you. God bless you.